Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again. Now it's time for episode 116 of Album of the Day, in which uh, for today's review, you can tell from the shirt I'm wearing that uh, today I'm going to be, you know, talking about uh, an album that uh, was uh, sent to me by the really kind folks at, over at uh, Yep Rock Records, which is like an independent label in uh, like North Carolina that, you know, is non-genre specific and uh, you specialize in all kinds of different types of music like folk, alt country, some bluegrass, um, and like indie rock and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, they got a pretty eclectic mix of music on their roster and since I am part of, and now, and, uh, and you know, uh, for the past couple of years I've been a member of their completist club where they send you uh, where they make you an honorary completist and send you every album they release in a year so I'm halfway through 2016 and the record I'm gonna talk about is um, uh, or I'm gonna talk about is uh, one that they released in February from sort of an indie rock band from Colorado that uh, I had never really listened to them before but this, but, uh, you know, I decided to uh, review this, because this is one record I've been enjoying quite a bit this year, and, uh, wanted to talk about it. So, it was released in February, and it's from a indie rock band from Colorado, Denver to be exact, probably, uh, titled by the name of Dressy Bessie, and the album is called King Sized. And this is, uh, the band's Yep Rock debut. I know these guys... I know these guys, like, um, had released music before, been around since, like, the late 90s, and I know this is, like, their first album, full-length album in, like, eight years, uh, but this is my first time actually listening to Dressy Bessie, but I'm really impressed with this album. This is easily one of my favorite rock albums of the year, and one of my favorite albums of the year, period, pretty much, and, uh, there's some really cool artwork on this, um, and, uh, that's like a photo of the band, like, uh, you know, just jamming in there, and, uh, then there's the disc there, um, and, um, and then, uh, there's, uh, the thank yous right there. <laughs> And it's got a booklet in here, which uh, has the lyrics and liner notes for everything. Very nice. So yeah, um, that's the that's the CD packaging for a uh, King Size, the new album from Dressy Bessie, right here. Now, um, like uh, the band, you know, pretty much consists of about four members. You know, pretty much always has, although there's like a couple of new guys in the band and stuff like that. So the band consists of singer of lead singer slash songwriter and guitarist Tammy Elam. Uh, lead guitarist John M. Hill, uh, drummer Great Crate Gilbert, and uh, uh, bassist Marcus Renninger, and uh, that's like the uh, sort of current lineup as of like 2015. And um, uh, so that's the lineup for the band. Why don't we just get right into the album? Um, so this is a record that definitely you know uh, you know took its time to really kind of you know, sit in with me pretty much, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, a record where, you know, um, you know, this isn't the kind of thing where, you know, you, you just want to listen to it at surface level, rather, you definitely want to dig in deep with this record, because, uh, you know, um, the, uh, uh, cause like, uh, cause like, you know, uh, the, the, the first time I listened to this record, you know, um, you know, I, you know, didn't really get the lyrics initially, 
uh, in terms of like, you know, I wasn't really sure what they were about, and I thought some of them sounded cutesy at first, but, but now I'm realizing it's actually not pretty much, and that it definitely has a, a little bit of a, that definitely has a big point to get across, pretty much. So, you know, the lyrics took their time to really settle in with me, uh, and as well as maybe some of the mu musical elements of it. But, but the album has really grown on me to the point where I just love it so much, you know, so much. It's just, you know, it's definitely a, a record where, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, or like, like, you know, it's definitely, you know, so, so it's definitely the kind of thing where, you know, it's, you know, kind of an acquired taste, but at the same time, uh, definitely, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, digestible as well. Like, you know, you could like, you know, Tammy Elam's kind of eccentric, sort of slightly rambling vocal delivery, uh, for the delivery a little bit, or, or not, but me, I am totally on board with it. Um, and also, like, uh, the, the production of this album, I think, is, uh, very well done as well. Um, well, it's very loud and clear, it's very crisp, it's, it's definitely kind of visceral, it's very fun, and, uh, you know, uh, fun. And also, we do have a pretty solid cast of guest musicians that show up on this record. Scott McCoy of the Minus Five, Rebecca Cole, as well as the v Vanessa Briscoe Hay, as well as the wide variety of different guest bassists that show up on this new album. This is their last bassist with the band. Their current bassist, Marcus Renninger, plays on the song Giddy Up. Um, some of the other guest bassists on this album include um, people like J Jason Garner of, of uh, Polyphonic Spree, um, um, Eric Allen, um, uh, yeah, Lynn, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Rob Green, and people like that, um, and, uh, and Michael Giblin, who, you know, brings in kind of a Buzzcocks-esque bass line for, uh, the title track, um, track on here, and, uh, and Tammy Elam, you know, as I read online on Yeprock's website when I looked up the biography on this band, uh, Tammy Elam did, you know, do, did perform some of the bass parts herself on some of the tracks on here, although for the most part there's about six different people playing bass on this record to help kind of fill in the, you know, sort of empty, sort of vacant gap that, uh, you know, um, uh, gap that, uh, you know, sort of, you know, uh, having their other bass player leave the band kind of resulted in, pretty much. Um, and it's also, it's a, it's a very melodic and catchy record. You know, it's definitely, you know, just kind of, it's a very fun album. I just feel that, you know, one thing is kind of missing in, like, a lot of rock music, like, in indie or alternative or anything like that, is that it kind of lacks fun a little bit. I mean, a lot of stuff in indie kind of just feels mostly like it seems like it's all like really long songs with no chorus and not really much focus on melody. Rather, on this LP, it's def melody is such a crucial part here. So, you know, it's not too indie, it's not too alternative, it's definitely kind of, uh, you know, it's a little, you know, in, in between because of, you know, uh, like, you know, yeah, if only more indie out indie music out there focused a lot more on melody and stuff like that instead of just having to make it so ab abstract or having to, you know, make a song that has no chorus on it whatsoever or anything like that. Not that it's a, not that it's a bad thing. You know, it's just, you know, this album definitely uh, is pretty it feels very refreshing to see an album, you know, that uh, you know, where uh you know, it is indie, but, you know, it's, you know, definitely uh, kind of, you know, melodic. And, but it's definitely melodic in the way that maybe a good pop rock song would be, pretty much. Um, much. Um, and, uh, 
And I, and I do really like some of the lyrics on this album. It's definitely, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, so some pretty clever, intelligent, you know, kind of quirky sort of wordplay on this album, like on the song Pop Phenom, which, you know, sort of uses the term of, like, uh, a pop phenomenon as, like, a metaphor, you know, or something like that, uh, and... Uh, and mentioning things like uh, the louder, uh, the louder the, uh, the uh, uh, like uh, the the harder I sing, uh, you know, uh, the louder they hum and stuff like that. Um, and and he, and she does and Timmy Elon does sort of refer to, sort of uh, you know he does sort of mention you know uh, that that kind of thing in music where uh, you know. Uh, you know, uh, your peers kind of have to embrace what you've become, pretty much, you know, uh, n n uh, no matter, you know, what they've said to you or something like that. So, like, you know, he does talk about how, you know, you know, when you're in this situation, you know, your parents or, your, you know, or anyone else tries to, you know, you know, a a embrace you or stuff like that. And, uh, and, you know, she's... And, and, and she's mentioning how, um, you know, uh, so, so, yeah, like, uh, you know, not, haven't really, you know, made too many heads or tails of this track lyrically, but I do think it is a pretty interesting lyrical moment on here. And also, some of the other songs on this album, I wouldn't necessarily say they're, like, political, but rather, they de but, but they definitely do have you know, a socially conscious kind of message to it. Like the song These Modern Guns and stuff like, like on songs like These Modern Guns or, um, you know, or the opening track on here, Lady Liberty and, uh, you know, s stuff like that. And, uh, you know, uh, and uh, this, as well as the song Dirty Birdies, which again, another kind of metaphor right there. Um, Kind of a uh, metaphor right there, um, there, and of course, uh, you know, it does talk a little bit about relationships, like on the song "Honeybee" uh, or something like that, uh, and uh, like that, and uh, so yeah, it's definitely a pretty well written sort of, you know, uh, but but it, so so yeah, it's definitely a very well written, very sharp kind of written album pretty much um, and also I was impressed also I was really impressed with some of the hooks on this album like on the song get along diamond ring some of the simplest lyrics you'll hear on the whole album but the hook on this thing is hella catch catchy give me no give me no give me no diamond ring it's just you know uh, I I just love that track uh, that track um, and of course, uh, there's, um, uh, and then, and so, yeah, there's definitely some, uh, great hooks to be, you know, f found on this record. Um, like, uh, you know, another, like another, uh, and, and then there's, like, there's a song Giddy Up, which has a pretty catchy little, you know, uh, mantra at the end and stuff like that. Um, like that, and, uh. That and uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, you know very melodic and stuff like that and uh, you know uh, stuff like that. That and uh, like uh, that and uh, like yeah, there's uh, you know uh, and uh, you know let me mention a few of the other songs that I didn't mention in here like, that I really like on here, like the song Cup of Bang Bang, which, uh, you know, is a, you know, kind of a, you know, a song that I'm sure is pretty, essentially is pretty socially conscious on lyrics, like, let's make a pledge to even, to even up the fight. It's not, like, overly political, but I definitely think it definitely has kind of a, it does talk a little bit about society, I guess, and stuff like that, and, um, and you know it definitely, uh, and 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 I do like some of the uh, you know metaphors on this track, like you know, 
you know, I'm not a fan, I'm just a cup of bang bang, or, uh, I'm, or, or, like, or, like, I'm not your friend, uh, uh, like, I, I'm not just your, I'm not your friend, I'm just your puppet, dang dang, and, and stuff like that, so, you know, some pretty, sort of, you know, uh, you know, quotable, sort of, you know, uh, wordplay on this track that I think works really well on here, uh, uh, to pair with, you know, the guitar, to pair with the, the really nice guitar riff, and, uh, like that, and, and then there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lunka, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure the song, you know, Giddy Up pretty much deals with, uh, you know, a similar thing lyrically and stuff like that, um, that, and, uh, there's def, and also, like, uh, there's some great energy, and also, I do really like the song, uh, Make Mine Violet as well, uh, you know, definitely, uh, uh, some, some great lyrics on that, uh, on that and stuff like that. Also, there's some great inner, and, and then also there's, uh, Dirty Birdies, which, uh, definitely, you know, is pretty, you know, uh, which is pretty heavy-handed on the wordplay, but not in a way, but, but not in a bad way, in a pretty good way. It's, uh, this track, a little goofy, but still, you know, I, you know, I do think, you know, it makes sense. I mean, if you're gonna have fun making a rock album, well, then you're probably gonna be a little goofy at points. But, uh, you know, still, you know, you're definitely, uh, but, but you're still gonna have some good appeal, pretty much. Um, much. And, uh, much. And also the song Say Goodbye seems to deal with kind of a, you know, troubled relationship a little bit. Um, bit and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, so I'm, so I mentioned quite a few things that I do really like about this album. Um, but also... I really like the energy that it's got, and also the way the instrumentation sounds in here. Uh, Peter Buck, uh, there's definitely, if you enjoy, like, some of those sort of post-punk indie bands like Slater Kinney, or maybe a little, even a little Modest Mouse, or if you enjoy maybe some 80s alternative and stuff like that, like, uh, some R.E.M. or stuff like that, I think you're going to find something to like on here. Peter Buck provides his jangly 12-string guitar to the songs Lady Liberty and Cup of Bang Bang. And I think he does that, and I think it really pairs really nicely with the kind of eccentric vocals and the kind of crackling guitar riffs that, you know, some of the guitar riffs could be likened to maybe something you'd hear on, like, a pre-Good News Modest Mouse album or something like that. Um, like that. And, uh, also there's, you know, some pretty crazy sort of, you know, frenetic energy to this album, like the frantic 57 disco, which has these ringing organs and, you know, organs and very fuzzed out sort of guitars. It's definitely one of the more in-your-face cuts on the record. Um, Gert, um, and, and then also there's, uh, you know, uh, and then also there's this, and then also there's the song Giddy Up, which is one of the more experimental cuts on the album. Features these weird little swirling feedback noises in the background. And then eventually you get a pretty, you know, uh, you can hear it pretty audibly during the end of this track. Uh, as well as kind of some, uh, uh, you know, uh, as well as kind of this plinky piano that I think pairs really nicely with the guitar riff on that track. The song Honey Bee has kind of a sunny, almost kind of beachy, pop rock feel to it without being too sort of sappy or anything like that. It definitely, you know, is one of my favorite tracks. That was one that initially, you know, kind of turned me off a little bit just because I thought the lyrics sounded maybe a little eye roller. But, you know, it really has grown on me to the point where I've realized that, the, you know, it's not as cutesy as it may sound at surface level. And yeah, I do like kind of the, you know, sort of, you know, uh, bright sort of sunny feel of this track, pretty much. Um, and then there's the song Dirty Birdies, which also sees the band experimenting a little bit with these 
weird kind of, you know, sort of, you know, uh, keyboards, as well as, you know, these, you know, sort of frantic shouts of, you're so pathetic, that go on in the background, stuff like that. Um, that uh, is definitely showing the band kind of, you know, sort of, you know, messing around a little bit, but, you know, not so much in a way that's like, uh, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't sound too, like, self-indulgent or anything like that. And, um, and, and then the song Say Goodbye has, uh, some, you know, pretty, uh, and the song Say Goodbye has these kind of, you know, sort of, you know, sort of dramatic sort of chord progressions going on on the keys on that track, uh, track which pair pretty nicely with the guitars. And I also do like the hook on that track. Ah, on there. Um, and uh, in the closer, in particular, very kind of an edgy way to close out the record, pretty much. If you look at the lyrics a little bit, or, you know, or like, you know, the, or like, you know, the production going on on that track. I mean, track, I mean, you know, the guitar. I, I mean, it's definitely some of my favorite, you know, sort of guitar tone toning on the album for sure. Um, yeah, I think it closes out the album on a very, on like the best note possible, pretty much. Um, no, possible, pretty much. And, uh, and like, uh, yeah, I've, and plus also there's like, you know, uh, so like the production is very well done. You know, there, there, there's lots of tambourines to be heard on this album and stuff like that. It's uh, definitely a very well produced uh, rock album for sure. You know, because it's very fun and, you know, it definitely all sounds very kind of crisp and, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of raw, but, you know, n not really in, but not really in like kind of a scuzzy lo-fi kind of way or anything like that. Um, <laughs> that, but, you know, it doesn't need to be that way. Um, so yeah, there aren't very many complaints I have about this record. I mean, if there's one track on here that I think could have been a little more satisfying, it may be the title track. You know, probably, you know, I do like the song itself. I do like the lyrics on that one. But, you know, it kind of, you know, it was maybe a little too short for me. It kind of breezed by me a little bit. You know, it was maybe a little too kind of, you know, kind of, it sounded maybe a little too much like kind of a short, aggressive piece of post-punk for me, but really that's the only low light for me on this album because I think it's a very well-crafted, you know, very easy to swallow kind of, you know, rock album that I think, you know, a lot of, you know, people who are into like indie rock or post-punk or, uh, you know, maybe, you know, or, uh, you know, as I said, like some, you know, some alternative, like, if you like a little REM or, uh, you know, stuff like that, you're probably going to find something to enjoy on this album. Um, so, yeah, I'm going with a 9 out of 10 for King Sized by Dressy Bessie. Initially, when I thought about doing this review before, I thought about maybe an 8 out of 10, but, you know, this album is just seriously so well-crafted. It's such a blast to listen to that I had to upgrade my opinion a notch. So, yeah, you know, definitely uh, a great album. So, you know, that's my review of King Size, the new Dressy Bessie record. Definitely check it out for yourself. Whether you're familiar with them or, or not, you know, uh, this was my introduction to them, but I'm pretty happy with, but I'm pretty happy that it was, because it definitely came out as probably one of my favorite albums of the year so far. So I'll see you for episode uh, 116. Oh, oh, uh, actually it's episode uh, 117. But anyway, this is Joshua Kirk signing off.